Hey guys, it's Justin, Video Game Addict 87, and today we are taking a look at who will win. Not take advantage of some lives for the benefit of others. Here's what we know about the PS4 already. Believe it or not, it actually started development two years after the, the re initial release of the PlayStation 3, as early as 2008. The delay placed Sony a year behind Microsoft's 360, which was already approaching 10 million units by the time the PS3 was launched. In 2012, Sony began shipping development kits to game developers consisting of a modified PC running the AMD APU chipset. The development kits were known as Orbis. In early 2013, Sony announced that the event known as the PlayStation Meeting would be held in New York City, and it would cover the events known as Future of PlayStation. Sony then officially announced the PS4 at the event. They revealed details of the PS4's hardware and discussed some of the new features it will introduce. It showed off the real-time footage of games in development as well as some technical demonstrations. They expect the release of the console in the fourth corner of this year. And then, on June 10th, 2013 at E3, Sony released more information about the PS4, as well as showing off the device itself. The PlayStation 4 will utilize a semi-custom APU developed by AMD in cooperation with Sony. Its APU will be a single chip that combines the CPU and GPU, as well as other components such as memory controller and video decoder. The CPU consists of eight core processor based on the upcoming Jaguar architecture from AMD. The GPU consists of 18 compute units to produce a theoretical peak performance of 1.84 teraflops. This processing power can be used for graphics, physics simulation, or even a combination of the two. The console also includes secondary custom chips that handle the tasks associated with downloading, uploading, and social gameplay. These tasks can be handled seamlessly in the background during gameplay or while the system is in sleep mode. Though there is not much currently known in the PS4's audio capabilities, the console also contains a dedicated hardware audio module which can support in-game chat with minimal external resources as well as a very large number in, parenthesis, in, in quotes rather, of MP3 streams for, in, uh, for use in in-game audio. PS4 is using an 8 gigs of unified system memory of GD GDDR5 with a maximum bandwidth of 176 gigabytes a second. This is 16 times the amount found in PS3 and is expected to give the console considerable longevity. The unified memory architecture allows the CPU and GPU to access a consolidated memory, removing the need for separate dedicated memory pools. The read-only optical drive will read Blu-ray discs at 6 times the CAV for maximum read speed of 27 megabytes a second, a significant upgrade from the PS3's 2 times speeds that were capped at 9 megabytes a second. To further enhance optical drive performance, the PS4 will feature a hardware on-the-fly Z-Lib de decompression mode, allowing for greater real-term bandwidth while at the same time, the console will continuously cache data on its hard disk, even buffering unread data when a game isn't actively accessing the optical drive, forming part of Sony's PlayGo strategy. Early reports indicate that the Blu-ray disk drive will not be capable of reading quad-layer 100GB disks, a new Blu-ray technology designed to support the 4K resolution. Although the console will support photos and videos of 4K resolution, the system is not expected to be able to render games beyond 1080p. The console will include a 500GB hard drive for additional storage, which can be upgraded by the user, a new feature not featured in the PS3. The PS4 will feature the standard wireless connectivity, rather, sorry, I don't know, I'm having, I'm having trouble saying that, Ethernet, Bluetooth 2.1, and two USB 3.0 ports. An auxiliary port will be included for connection to the PlayStation camera, a motion detection digital camera device first introduced on the PS3. A mono headset, which can be plugged into the DualShock 4, will become bundled with the system. Audio video outputs options include HDMI as well. The PlayStation 4 does not have analog audio video outputs. 
The controller has even been upgraded from the DualShock 6 axis. The DualShock 4 will be the PlayStation 4's primary controller, retailing at around $60 US, 60 euros, or 55 pounds. Similar to the DualShock 3, it will be connected to the console via Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR. The DualShock 3, however, will not be compatible with the PS4. The DualShock 4 will be equipped with several new features including a built-in two-point uh, compatible touchpad on the front of the controller, which is clickable. The controller will support motion detect with the three-axis gyroscope and three-axis accelerometer and improve vibration. It will also include a non-removable, rechargeable lithium-ion battery, tentatively capable of storing 1,000 mega Tentative design weighs two, 210 grams, or 7.4 ounces, and has dimensions of 162 by 52 by 98 millimeters, or 6.4 by 2.0 by 3.9 inches, and has rubber or etched plastic backing to enhance grip. The design shown at the PlayStation 4 reveal event was near final. The controller will feature several output connectors. Its stereo jack, a 3.5mm TRS connector, will support the connection of a headset to allow the user to speak and hear auto audio simultaneously. A micro USB port, an extension port, and a mono speaker will also be included. The controller will be charged via the micro USB, a dedicated charging station, or even the console when the console is off. Another new feature the PS3 didn't have. The DualShock 4 will feature the following buttons. The PlayStation button, share button, options, directional buttons, action, which is triangle, circle, cross, and square, the shoulder buttons, R1 and L1, and the triggers, R2 and L2, plus the analog stick click buttons, L3 and R4, or L3 and R3, rather not R4, and the touchpad click button. These mark several changes from the DualShock 3 and other previous PlayStation controllers. The start and select buttons have been merged into a single options button. Dedicated share button will allow players to upload video from their gameplay experiences. The joysticks and triggers have been redesigned based on the developer input. The joysticks now have a concave surface. The DualShock 4 will also feature a light bar that can display different colors. The colors will help identify players and alert them with critical messages such as low health. It will also interact with a camera attachment that perceives its movement and depth by using controller's light bar. It is based on the existing technology used in the PlayStation Move. Existing PlayStation Move controllers will be also supported by the PS4. The PlayStation camera is a motion sensing input device for the PS4. It will include two 1280 by 800 pixel cameras. The lenses will operate with an aperture of something slash 2.0 with a 30 centimeter focusing distance and an 85 degree field of view. The dual camera setup will allow for different modes of operation depending on the target application. The two cameras can be used together for depth sensing of objects in the field of vision, akin to the Xbox 360's Kinect peripheral. Alternately, one of the cameras can be used for generating the video image while the other used for motion tracking. The PlayStation camera also features a four-channel microwave, yeah, microwave, microphone array, which helps reduce unwanted background noise and may even used, be used to issue commands. It is tentatively set to be 186 by 27 by 27 millimeters, or 7.3 by 1.1 by 1.1 inches, in a height of 183 grams or 6.5 ounces. It will record video in RAW and the, uh, YUV uncompressed formats and will be connect with the PlayStation 4 via the console's auxiliary port. The PlayStation camera would be released as a separate add-on accessory priced at $60 in the US, 49 euros or 44 pounds. Wow, the UK is really doing good with that one. The PlayStation 4 also runs in an operating system called Orbis OS, on which the current development prototype uses a free BSD9 kernel. Although the PS4 does not require an internet connection to function, Sony says the PlayStation 4's feature set is richer when online. 
The PlayStation Network will allow players to access a variety of cloud-based services from the PlayStation Store, including Music Unlimited and Video Unlimited subscription services. Customers can browse titles and stream games via Gaiki to try them out almost instantly. Online multiplayer access requires a subscription to the PlayStation Plus, a new policy to the PlayStation consoles, but free-to-play titles such as DC Universe Online, Planet Side 2, and Warframe will be playable without a subscription, and functions such as online leaderboards can still be accessed. Furthermore, owning to the need to subscribe for online multiplayer, Sony will not allow online passes to be used on the system by any publisher. Sony intends to expand and involve the services it offers for the PS4's lifespan. One of my biggest fears for the PS4 was backwards compatibility. Unfortunately, the PS4 will not include the ability to support previous PlayStation console games at launch. Sony has instead detailed plans to explore cloud-based emulation of previous generations as a long-term solution to the challenges of backwards compatibility. The firm has yet to rule out an on-console emulation of previous generations. Sony is planning to launch a cloud-based streaming service that has been acquired by Sony in July of 2012 called Gaike. The service will emulate and render previous generations of PlayStation games, streaming them to the PS4 and likely the Vita over the internet. Should the need arise to end a gaming session at a short notice, the PS4 will enter a low power state and suspend the player's game when they departed from it, so that later, like the PSP, when full power is restored, the player can quickly resume where they left off, negating any unnecessary splash screens at the menu options. Honestly, I think they should have done this way before even with the PS3, but that's just me. So, we've gone over all the boring hardware and all the new modes, all the new backwards compatibility, but what about the reception of the PS4? Well, overall it's been 100% positive compared to Xbox One, which I'll get to in a minute. Mark Green of Epic Games praised the enhanced architecture of Sony's system, describing it as a phenomenal piece of hardware. John Carmack, programmer and co-founder of ID Software, also commented by the design by saying, Sony made the engineering choices. Very wise. Very wise engineering choices. While Randy Pitchford of Gearbox Software expressed satisfaction with high, uh, the amount of high-speed memory in the console. After Sony's E3 2013 press conference, IGN uh, responded positively to Sony's attitude towards indie developers and trading games, saying that they thought most gamers would agree that if you care about games like Sony does, you'll buy a PS4. PS4's removable and upgradable hard drive also drew praise from IGN, with Scott Lowe commenting on the decision that gave the PS4 another advantage over the Xbox One, which has an inaccessible hard drive. Again, I'll get to that in a minute. GameSpot also states that PS4 is the gamer's choice for the next generation, citing the price, the lack of restrictive digital rights management, and most importantly, Sony's efforts to acknowledge its consumers and respect its audience as major factors. GameSpot editor Tom McShay wrote by saying no to the used game restrictions and always online that Microsoft is so happily Im implementing on the Xbox One Sony has have elevated the PS4 as the console to grab this holiday season. Personally, again, I've said it a trillion times already, PS4 has such a major advantage over the Xbox One. Although I've absolutely hated everything about the Xbox One up until the very last week after E3, the Xbox One is unfortunately one of the upcoming video game consoles from Microsoft. <sighs> Announced on May 21st. You know what, I have to be impartial. I have to be impartial. So let's do this again. Fuck this shit!
Announced on May 21st of this year, it is the successor of the Xbox 360 and the third console in the Xbox family of consoles. It is scheduled for release in November of this year and will directly compete with Sony's PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Wii U as part of the 8th generation of video game consoles. Microsoft and various publications have been classified on the device as an all-in-one entertainment system, making it a competitor to other home media devices such as the Apple TV and Google TV platform. Moving away from the power PC-based architecture used in the 360, the console, the console features an AMD processor built around the, you guessed it, x86 instruction set. The console places an increasing emphasis on entertainment and integrating the Kinect per peripheral offering the ability to use an existing set-top box to watch live television and a built-in Skype client and improved second screen support. The console also provides new functionality for use in games such as an expanded Xbox Live service, improved Kinect functionality, cloud computing, the ability to automatically record and share video highlights from gameplay, and integrated support for live streaming gameplay online. In 2010, Microsoft's Chris Lewis stated that the 360 was about halfway through its life cycle. This was aided by the introduction of the Kinect device later that year, which Lewis stated would extend the life cycle by about five years. Initial hardware for the 360 successor, commonly referred to the industry as the Xbox 720, was reportedly in the hands of developers as early as May 2011. The official developer kit was codenamed Durango, and appeared to be available to developers by mid-2012. Leaked documents suggest that the new console would include an improved Kinect device, cloud access to games and media, integration with phone and tablet devices, and technology to provide players heads-up displays on glasses worn by the player, codenamed Fortezella. I've never heard that before, but whatever. Microsoft did not comment on these reported features. Similar, leaked design documents also suggested that Microsoft was seeking to eliminate the ability to play used games, though Microsoft later clarified that they were still reviewing the design and were thinking about what is next and how we can push the boundaries of technology like we did with Kinect, but did not comment on the fidelity of the information. The new console was formally revealed in this new product name, Xbox One, on May 21st in a press conference designed to cover until cover the unit's broad multimedia and social capabilities, with additional fo information focused on the game playing experience and anticipated launch titles at E3 on June 11th to the 13th. I must admit, the Xbox One's exterior casing consists of a two-tone liquid black finish which does look pretty amazing, with half finished in matte gray and the other in a glossier black. The design of the Xbox One's components were designed to evoke a more entertainment-oriented and simplified design than previous iterations of the console, among other changes. The LED rings used by the 360 are replaced by a glowing white Xbox logo used to communicate with the system status to the user. The Xbox One has an APU with, as we've mentioned before, the 8-core processor and 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM with a memory bandwidth of 68.3 gigabytes a second. The memory subsystem also features an additional 32 meg of embedded static RAM or ES RAM with a memory bandwidth of 102 gigabytes a second. The Eurogamer has been told that for sim simultaneous read and write operations, the e ES RAM is capable of a theoretical memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second and that 133 has been achieved with operations that involve alpha transparency blending. The system includes a 500 gig non-replaceable hard drive and a Blu-ray optical drive, thank you to Sony. Kotaku, Game Informer, and Gizmondo said that the 3 gigs of RAM will be reserved for operating systems and apps, leaving 5 gigs for games. The graphics processor unit, GPU, is based on an AMD GCN architecture with 12 compute units which have a total of 768 cores, providing an estimated peak theoretical power of 1.23 teraflops. For networking, the Xbox One supports Gigabit Ethernet 802.11 and wireless and Wi-Fi Direct. The Xbox One will support 4K resolution video output, and 7.1 surround sound. Yusuf Mahidi, 
uh, corporate vice president of marketing and strategy for Microsoft, has stated that there is no hardware restriction that would prevent games from running at 4K resolution. The Xbox One will support HDMI 1.4 for both input and output. The Xbox One does not have a video output for either composite or component video. One of the awesome key features of the Xbox has been the Kinect. The Xbox One will ship with an updated version of the Kinect sensor. The new Kinect uses a 1080p wide-angle time-of-flight camera in comparison to the VGA resolution of the previous version, and processes 2 gigabits of data per second to read its environment. The new Kinect has greater accuracy over its predecessor, can track up to six skeletons at once, perform heart rate tracking, track gestures performed with an Xbox One controller, and scan QR codes to redeem Xbox Live gift cards. The Kinect microphone will remain active at all times so it can receive voice commands from the user when needed, even when the console is in sleep mode, so it will be woken back up with a command. The Xbox One does not function unless the Kinect sensor is connected. However, users retain the software cap capability to turn off all Kinect sensors while the sensor remains connected to the console. A Windows-compatible version of the Kinect will be released in 2014. Now I'm going to stop right there. The whole heart rate tracking and can track up the six skeletons at once. The only, excuse me, the only need I see for that is as a emergency purposes only. However, there's been a lot of fears lately that have been going around about the whole heart rate tracking and, you know, track how many people are in the room was used for Microsoft's own purposes. We won't really know to tell you the truth. We will never know. Microsoft will keep that to themselves until the company goes flat broke. I mean, bust. I mean, bankrupt. That's right, bankrupt. Yeah. Sure. It seems the Xbox isn't the only thing that has seemed to be upgraded. The Xbox Live has also recently got a massive upgrade. Microsoft stated that the Xbox Live service will be scaled up to use 300,000 servers for Xbox One users, but have not stated how many servers will be physical and how many will be virtual. Cloud storage will be offered to save music, films, games, and save content, and developers will be able to use Xbox Live servers along with Windows Azure cloud computing platform to offer massive, living, and persistent worlds. The service will be still using the subscription-based method and the friends list will be expanded to a thousand friends. The Xbox Smart Glass will provide extended functionality to Xbox One, allowing Windows Phone smartphones, Windows RT, and Windows 8 tablets to be used as a second screen. A demo during E3 press conference demonstrated it for setting up multiplayer match in another game in the background on a tablet while playing another game on the television. The Xbox Live Gold subscribers will be able to use the Upload Studio app to edit and share clips of gameplay footage that is automatically recorded on the console. Integration with the live streaming platform Twitch will also be provided. Users will be able to use voice commands to immediately begin streaming footage of their current game directly to the service and use Connect Microphone for commentary and voiceovers. Despite the ability to record gameplay, the Xbox One will not include DVR functionality for recording television programs. Executive Yusuf Mahadi uh, indicated that the Xbox One would work in tandem with existing TV providers, but that Microsoft may need to work with them directly to provide functionality extensive of the DVR integration. The Microsoft Xbox One ultimately is not perceived very well. At the official reveal in May, the editorial staff of Game Informer offered both praise and criticism for the console. Matt Helgeson described the console as Microsoft's intent to control the living room. He called the Xbox One's instant switching features impressive and that the console was a step in the right direction with regards to TV entertainment, especially the prospect of avoiding the uses of uh, non-intuitive user interfaces often found on cable set top boxes. Jeff Cork said that the Microsoft Microsoft had some great ideas for the console, but that it failed to properly communicate them. Uh, following the press release um, on June 10th, uh, perceptions of the, micro, uh, the uh, Xbox One by critics changed. Multiple GameSpot writers were uh, critical of the new console, 
Mark Walton uh, considered the Xbox One's launch lineup to be uninspired, lackluster, and plagued by old men in suits, a stream of buzzwords, and superficial games that valued visuals over innovation, as opposed to the new generation of gaming that Microsoft had promised to pre uh, present during the event, by contrast to its previous television-oriented presentation. Alongside strict DRM practices, while editor Tom McShay noted that despite the increased capabilities and cloud-oriented nature of the Xbox One, the presentation consisted of only pe uh, pretty games that didn't offer any notable change to the core experience we've already been playing on the 360, providing existing owners with little reason for spending $500 on the new console. Journalists and consumers jokingly named the, the console X-Bone, believing that Microsoft's decisions for the system was in poor judgment. After Sony's E3 press conference that later that night, McShay went on to say that Microsoft had become anti-consumerist, trying to punish their loyal customers with strict res uh, restrictions, and that by saying that no use game restrictions and always offline that Microsoft is so happily implementing on the Xbox One, Sony has elevated the PS4 as the console to grab this holiday season. Yet again, sorry for repeating that. Um, Rafai uh, Muhammad, author of The Art of Pricing, said on Bloomberg TV that Microsoft priced the Xbox One way too high and that the $100 premium over the competitor would derail the system this holiday. Now, as far as the used games thing is concerned, the digital rights management system would tie all game purchases, regardless of whether it was purged digitally or physically, to the user's Xbox account or the Xbox One console. Almost nine days after the initial announcement of the DRM, Microsoft released a statement on June 19th outlining how the policies as originally envisioned would be dropped in favor of a system that works in much the same way as the Xbox 360. The new policies include no internet connection requirements, saving for a one-time connection upon initial installation, disks no longer requiring authentication, wow I had trouble with that one, sorry about that, and no regional restrictions. A side effect of this policy will be dropping of the family sharing feature, while digital titles will not be requiring authentication. I'm sorry, titles will not be shareable. Oh, God, it's been a long day, hasn't it? Yes, okay. Sorry, <laughs> gotta focus. Okay, Xbox One, there we go. A statement later made by Microsoft asserted that the removal of sharing feature was only to assure that they could deliver the console on time with revised functionality, and that sharing may return in the future, but not a guarantee it at a time frame for this. A patch will be required when the Xbox One is first connected to the internet. This patch will enable offline mode along with updating the software for other changes in the policy. Other analysts believe that the change was in uh, direct response of Sony's aggressive position for the E3 conference. Similar to the Xbox, uh, Xbox X Bone name, many journalists and players jokingly named the Xbox One as the Xbox 180 due to reversal of these policies. Don Matrick, who has been a leader in Xbox One development, announced his departure from Microsoft on July 1st, 2013, to become the CEO of Zynga, with some uh, other analysts stating that his departure was predicted on the poor response and subsequent reversal on his plans for Xbox One. So this is the major question. Which is the console that you pick up this holiday season? My answer is neither, and I'll tell you why. Ultimately, yes, I will get a PS4 because this whole, you know, 180 nonsense that Microsoft was doing, pointing the finger in other directions, so on and so forth, even initially thinking about the DRM really got me thinking, you know, what kind of a company does that? What kind of a company for years and years and years, everyone else was doing the same thing, just creating games for entertainment and, of course, to make some money. Sony was still doing it. Why is Microsoft all of a sudden, well, not anymore, but why would Microsoft all of a sudden decide this DRM was a good idea? To me, the Xbox all-in-one entertainment thing, yeah, initially it's a good idea, maybe for the future, but don't include TV. Maybe include, like, exclusive programs that, you know, maybe they should have thought about when uh, the whole Defiance thing came out. Instead of putting it out on the Sci-Fi channel, include that on the Xbox One. Do a port over, you know, have people start over again that haven't actually played it yet. Things like that probably would have been a better idea. But no, they fucked up. They fucked up hard. 
right up the ass. The wooden dildo. Pisses me off. The reason why I say that you should get neither console this holiday season is simply because first generation consoles always have bugs. Doesn't matter how many planning stages they go through, how many different prototypes of the operating system, it just doesn't matter. Simply put, PlayStation 4 will be the best option, but give it a generation or so for the console to get all the bugs worked out. When it comes down to Xbox One, if you don't have TV and you want something that is all in one, then get it. There are some exclusives that are coming to Xbox One that aren't coming to PS4 that may be worth checking out. But, ultimately, PS4 is getting more exclusives. They're having much more fun developing this thing. Not to mention the fact that Sony really knows how to put the, uh, the dagger in your back and just squeeze it around a little bit, pull it out, put some lemon juice in there, a little salt. You know, it's not like fun, right? So yes, ultimately, go out, get a PS4, second generation, maybe even third generation. Of course, once the second generation comes out, we'll probably also see a price drop, so it'll go from you know, $399 down to 299 And at that point, you can probably even pick a PS3 up for less than 100 bucks. Who knows? And that's all the time I've got for today, guys. I thank you so much for watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, if you liked it, you know, please subscribe and like the video. Tell me why you liked it. If you didn't, hit subscribe anyway. Dislike the video and tell me why you didn't like it. Was there anything that was off-key? Did you just not like my opinion? Whatever. You guys still, please uh, like me on Facebook. Uh, follow me on Twitter. And I got rid of Blogger, and I have a new website where you can keep up to date with all my shenanigans. It's uh, videogameaddict87.wix.com forward slash home. I hope to see you guys next time here on Video Game Addict 87. Enjoy the rest of your week.